Earlier this evening, the House voted to avoid a government shutdown. Speaker Johnson, he barely squeaked by, getting the votes that he needed from your conference to pass that short-term spending bill. 106 Republicans, yourself included, uh, opposed it. Right before voting, you said House Republicans have failed the test of fighting in this moment. In your eyes, is this a failure of Speaker Johnson's? It's a failure of all of ours. Actually, 108 of us voted against it. That's significant because 107 voted for it. So a majority of Republicans in the House did not support this measure. It was advanced with the assistance of Democrats. And if this is the way we're going to govern, I fear we won't be in the majority longer. We have gone to the border. We have shown that the border is a major issue. I wish the border was way more central to the discussion between Jake Tapper and Governor Haley this evening. And it's not central to our strategy on the government funding dispute. That's my criticism of the approach we've taken. Uh, Speaker Johnson has assured me today in an extended meeting that we had that before this March deadline is reached, we're going to be passing border security bills. We're going to be putting pressure on the Senate to take those up and then ultimately include that in, in the long term uh, ne negotiated deal that we have to put together in divided government. So are you comfortable with um, the compromise that Speaker Johnson made with Democrats to fund the government at, at effectively the same level that it was funded at uh, under a deal that Kevin McCarthy brokered with President Biden. Are you comfortable with that? Well, it's not exactly the same. You see, the Johnson deal claws back $20 billion of the $50 billion in side deals that Kevin McCarthy lied to us about. That alone justifies his ouster. And I wish that Johnson would have gotten us more clawed back from the McCarthy side deals. And it certainly was a disappointment that he didn't. But with McCarthy, it wasn't just that he was doing with deals with Democrats. It was the duplicitous nature. It was continuing to tell us one thing to do another and then to have these off screen uh, negotiated agreements that were seemingly binding the House in the absence of any vote. The other thing is that McCarthy had a different majority, Abby. We had a four-seat majority, but then Kevin took his marbles and went home. We expelled George Santos. Bill Johnson became the president of Youngstown State. And so it's hard to judge Johnson by precisely the same standard as he would judge McCarthy because he doesn't have the same majority McCarthy had, in part because McCarthy left. Well, <laughs> you... You kill, kicked McCarthy out of his job. You, you forgot just to speaker, include that Just speaker, just speaker, Abby. There are 434 of us who are willing to do the job without being speaker. Look, I, just one last thing. I mean, look, you're saying you cannot hold Speaker Johnson to the same standard, but he's now passed two continuing resolutions, which you said was unacceptable when Kevin McCarthy did it. Uh, is Speaker Johnson's job in jeopardy, if only for that reason? No. Again, as I said, it wasn't one thing with McCarthy. It was an accumulation of misrepresentations, lies, and the sense that we were being sold out time and again in these negotiations. With Johnson, he's been very clear up front when he has a one-seat majority uh, having to balance the needs of a diverse caucus, trying to get us into a fighting posture. It is my hope, it is my expectation that we get into that fighting posture before taking the third strike of a third continuing resolution so based on my conversation with the, with the speaker. Would be be a third it, strike in your view? That would be the end if he were to I do it a third time? I think that's the speaker's view. I don't think the speaker wants to do another continuing resolution. Frankly, I don't even think he wanted to do this one. Now, getting our appropriations bills passed, fighting for those policy objectives that matter to Republican voters, that's how we broaden the majority. We don't broaden our majority by cowering in fear. We have to be bold, and I, I hope this is the speaker who can do that for us. Congressman Matt Gates, thank you for joining us. Thanks, Abby.